Hello YouTube, this is Jerry D in Tennessee and I've got this project I'm working on where we are extracting between 90 and 100 different Visual Studio projects out of Microsoft's Team Foundation Server repo. Now, there is a tool, it's open source, it's on GitHub, it's called GitTFS. What I have here on the screen, I'm talking about the previous version of GitTFS because there's a difference in the different releases and there's important things that you will need to know. So, for uh, version 27, GitTFS, GitTFS.27.0 you need to be using Team Explorer for Visual Studio for 2010, 2012, 2013, or 2015. It will not work with 2017. So if you want to go with 2017, and how you can tell is when you unzip the application, this is what the folder looks like, and you're going to have a folder per the supported versions of Visual Studio and Team Explorer. So, and what you can do, if you don't have to, uh, Visual Studio installed on your box, if you download the Team Explorer for the version of Visual Studio that you're targeting, that installer should install the Visual Studio version it needs for Team Explorer. It will go automatically download and install the right, correct version it needs. And so, what we went with was 2017. Which is, uh, if you go, if I go to the next slide, go to the next slide, there we go, uh, 0 0.32.0 supports Visual Studio 2015, 2017, and 2019. So I'm using Visual Studio and, Visual, and Team Explorer for 2017. All right, so... Uh, so one, you need to have Git installed on your local box. You need to be familiar with the commands. I'd go if you're not familiar, I'd go look at some videos on just the basic commands on on um, commits and tags and just the basic commands on using Git. Get familiar with that because you want to. It's best to do this through a command line. If you do the GUI version of the Git TFS, you are limited to only 188 commits, I believe. And if you do the command line version, the command line version will pull all of your commits out. And I don't know why you have the limitation on the GUI, but uh, it's, it is what it is. Um, so, so what I went with is I'm using Visual Studio 2017. Now, to get, get TFS here, in case you want to find out that, that you want to make sure you go to the right path don't download some fake version of this. I don't think that anybody's tried to fake this out, but I just thought I'd show the URL. If you go out to github.com slash gettfs uh, slash gettfs, then you'll be on the right page. Now, if when you go to, if you look at the readme, it starts, um, it talks about using chocolatey, and I tried to use the latest version of uh, Visual, T, uh, Visual Studio that they have out. This is uh, May 17th, 2023. I, I started this about March is when I started playing around with this stuff. And um, I've run into a lot of errors on chocolatey, and it's probably because... There's been new versions of um, all the parts and pieces that were used to compile this thing. .NET has changed. There's been releases for that security releases. There's been releases for your um, your uh, Windows environment. So the easiest way the easiest way to get this up and running is go to the release page, get the very latest version, which um, it's dot three two zero at the time of this video. Download the release 
of the binary and just download it and install it, unzip it, install it, which that was the folders I was showing you, was the latest revision and then, then previous as well. And make sure you got the right versions of, of Stu Visual Studio. As you could see in my previous slide, that there were different folders in there for each version that they supported. So once you get that set up like that, once you get that, you get that downloaded, put it out in a directory, you need to add it to your path. I stuck mine in the x86 because it's a 32-bit application. So uh, got it set in here and you can see where I have the path set up. I also had chocolatey and that's where I tried to, I tried to build it from chocolatey and I that would just that just went down a, a bunny trail that I just didn't really want to go and didn't really have the time to do this to play around and try to figure it out or even rewrite some code so uh, it would work with the latest and greatest versions of all the pieces and parts that it's using to compile this thing. So uh, I've installed Git. I installed. I just put the uh, binaries in uh, 32 bit executable folder on my box and put that in my path and then once you get everything set up and you have a place a folder that you're going to work in or play around in then you can run the commands so once your environment is set up i would run a um, command line as administrator Go to the folder that you're going to play around with, and then here's your first command, git tfs, and this is a space, no dash, but if you look at the executable, it's got a dash in the name. But anyway, anyway, uh, git, dash t git tfs, clone http, and then your server URL to your repository, and then you do a dollar sign, then the repo name that you're pulling, and then you do a dot, and then the name of the folder, and it will create the folder as it's pulling stuff. It, you don't have to have the folder sitting there. It will create the folder. So this gets it on your box. So you might need to play around with it, make some changes to your box. I mean, it's like some, for example, some of our repos had a main folder, and... Um, our new way of thinking in our development team, uh, they'd rather not have that main folder in there. So I had to pull, I'm, I'm copying all the source out of the main folder because it's just an extra level. You had the you had the name of the project, slash main, slash, like the name of the project or, or whatever they're, the piece they're working on and they want to get rid of the main. And so I've copied all the code and set all the code in the this base folder that the main folder is sitting in and um, deleted the main folder after I had all the content out uh, did a uh, commit asterisk to get all the changes to move everything out of the main and then no I had to do an add asterisk add asterisk to add all the changes and then if you do get status it'll show you all the changes that you need to commit and then I did a commit, and then I did a, my push. Well, before I could do the push, you had to add to get. You have to do. You have to add your remote. So this command get remote add origin. Now some of them, um, some of the repos, the name might be master and some may be main. So, uh, so if you look at this, so, and it depends on how it gets created in your GitHub, there's, there's going to be a, um, the, uh, I believe the latest version of Git that we have on our server, when it creates a new, you'll have to create the repository before you can do the push anyway. So, the, the original main branch or the master branch is starts out as main and we're going back to the master we're calling it master so um, but if you leave it main this example works for main so 
you do the git remote add origin and then the URL to your repo for your remote and it should be an empty it's just just create an empty repository with nothing in it don't even I wouldn't even create the way readme and stuff till you pull the stuff off of TFS and once you pull the stuff off of TFS I would then create the readme file and um, anything else you need and as an extra commit and then after you get everything the way you want it then I would do the push so And to to push it, you you can do a git push dash u origin main or master origin master is what we're using. So and I pulled these instructions off of the um, the git repo, but when it first starts, it tells you how to how to push the stuff. So if you if you need to push when you create, you probably have to do a dash dash force. To get it to push to replace everything if you make changes and stuff because I think what's going to happen I, I believe what I had to do is do a dash dash force to push everything because what what you do if you create like a your own um, your own readme and stuff it's going to say well you've got changes here you haven't committed and uh, and there you go so just it's easier just to do git push dash u origin main space dash f o r c e actually it might be dash dash maybe dash f or dash dash force i think it's dash dash force and not dash or you can do dash f if it's just f you just do a dash f if it's a force if it's, it's a dash dash uh, force so anyway I'm just doing this impromptu. I thought it'd be a good video. I've got a coworker that's going to have to install it on their box, and I hope I haven't confused anybody. So uh, it, it works. This tool works really well. It's going to pull stuff off. And right now we're vetting all our um, our um, repos. It's in Team Foundation server on how we're going to pull the stuff across because you can have a solution with multiple multiple projects within one solution and the we tend to be heading on splitting up all the projects into its own repo as we go forward it's just a flat thing and that way you can search for each um, each project by name in the, the git repository your your main git repository you can do a search if you got if you have many many you can filter and just do a search for the certain name and it's going to pop up so there you have it i hope i haven't confused anybody but this thing didn't have a have a how to it or read me and most people most the videos i saw out there if uh there's other videos out there about using this thing, but it's mainly about it's already set up on the person's box and they're running the commands. So, uh, I, I just felt like some of the people's crazy to pass videos have uh, left out some information, and this, the setup's really important to know. When and it's not, it's not straightforward when you go to the start and. The, the project slowed down because a lot of people that's jumped from Team Foundation Server and with the Git have already done it. So the project's not been a priority with uh, most of the guys. When a lot of people were originally making the move, it was, it was a really hot project and there was a lot of updates being made to it. But uh, anyhow, I want to quit rambling, but I wanted to make this video and, and uh, put out some details. If you're trying to get this thing set up, uh, this is uh, my quick and dirty on how I got it set up, the commands that I'm using, and uh, the, the dash force is important. I wish I'd put that in the slide, but I think I'll put the, I think I'll put the instructions, the, the um, commands down in the description down below the video as well. But thanks for watching my video, and if you have any questions, um, I don't know how much I, time I can, um, relate to the questions but I'll, I'll answer to the best of my ability or the best of time permits because right now we're kind of busy trying to get this project done all right folks so you have a good evening and thanks for watching the video again this has been recorded on uh, may 17 2023
All right, folks, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye. Bella's got to be right up under me, don't you, Bella? Oh, my word. Cloudy day, looks like it may rain. Clouds out over the valley. East Tennessee Valley. And Bella, she's just happy to be around. <laughs>